So first of all, thank you to everyone who's joining us today. Uh, this is the third workshop in our online professional development series. Uh, we've started them since the lockdown um, and it built upon some of Voices' earlier work uh, to engage in professional development training for early career women. Um, so we'll get started then. Um, so we're gathered here today to discuss shaping policy and to explore skills, tips, tricks, and perspectives on, on engaging with policymaking spaces, uh, particularly from the perspective uh, of early career women and for early career women who are interested in doing more in the world of policy. So I guess that the really first place uh, to start is by introducing myself and our fellow panelists. Uh, so my name is Kate McNeil and I'll be the chair today. Joining me today, I'm delighted to be able to welcome our panelists, uh, Isabel Quo and Philip, as well as a couple of members of the Voices team, including one who will be speaking a little bit more about Voices later on. Before I turn over the floor to our panelists, I want to take a few moments to sort of explore the question, why get involved in policymaking? Um, so my personal background um, is in politics. Um, I worked in Canadian politics for a couple of years, and then now I work for a policy translation center, translating from academia into policymaking spaces. And what I've really learned across those roles is that diverse voices and perspectives lead to better policies, uh, which have better outcomes for society and can do more to benefit everyone. Uh, when I was working for the Liberals in Canada, our slogan for recruiting candidates was add women, change politics. As well, uh, gender equality is really a question of power. And that sort of is something that's been repeated at the UN on multiple occasions and by a lot of people who are working in this space. However, women remain underrepresented both in formal political spaces such as national parliaments, but also in the other spaces that sort of interact with policy making. So only about 35 to 40% of the lobbying profession in countries where it has been studied um, are actually women. Senior positions in think tanks are still predominantly men and those things need to change. Some of that change can happen from the ground up. So we need diversity in sort of getting everybody involved in small ways and in big ones so that every facet of policy conversations and political decision making are sort of hearing from people who have diverse ideas, lived experiences, and may have a diverse set of reasons for wanting to participate in change within their society. I think that probably the best example that I've come across in my own experience of that in action was that in 2017, I was working for, in the Canadian House of Commons and we managed to unanimously pass a motion through the House uh, which called upon the Health Committee to study ways of increasing benefits to the public resulting from federally funded health research. Our goal was to lower drug costs and increase access to medicines, both in Canada and globally. The momentum behind that motion just didn't come from one MP and two political staffers sitting in an office. We were able to do that and to do that in a way that was actually good for people because we spent months listening to people and organizations whose lives, work, and research were impacted by barriers to accessing medicines. Their voices helped ensure that we were getting the best possible form of evidence and a diverse set of reasons as to why changes needed to be made to the system. And we were able to bring a lot of their voices in throughout sort of the committee process, um, particularly in calls for witnesses. And we wouldn't have been able to do that if so many people hadn't been willing to bring in their perspectives and stories. With that said, um, one thing that Dame Sally Davies, the UK's former chief medical officer has often emphasized is that it's often important to find the right moment or the right person or the right set of circumstances to get something done. Um, for many people and many issues, this is already a moment of change, which is why it's a great time to be experiencing this. So with that in mind, I want to emphasize that there are many ways to get involved in a space to sort of influence policymaking. You could start a petition, participate in an advocacy day for an organization, get involved in campaigning, join a political party, get a job in a sector where you'll be able to influence policy, whether it be the civil service, a think tank, or a lobbyist organization, or maybe one day run for an office yourself. Policy participation can also come out of participation in civil society more broadly. And today we're gonna to hear from a couple of people who will bring different perspectives to those issues. 
But now I'm going to hand over to Juan, who's going to talk a little bit more about voices more broadly. Hello, everyone. So, so I want to introduce a bit the Voices project that is behind the organization of this workshop. So the Voices project started uh, two years ago in Belfast when the Global Shapers community uh, gathered in uh, to have the European submit. And the observation was that uh, when you go to a public uh, speaking uh, event, there are not enough women represented there. So for example, I work in STEAM in like technical uh, computer science. And there are usually when I go to a public event, there are like maybe 10% of women uh, there. So, and we found that you know every field, yeah, like women are not very well represented. So we form voices to create a platform where we can uh, like help young women leaders to disseminate their work. So over the past two years, we have formed a team of around 10 members in Dublin, in Cambridge, in UK, and also in Palermo, Italy, where we have organized like a, a semi a webinars and workshops for like, like I guess some of you, this is not the first time you join us for a webinar to, yeah, to, to teach or to instruct on future leader women how to disseminate their work basically. And we also have created a website and we have our social networks that we will share with you in the end of this call. And in the future, what we want to create and what we envision is to create a community of young uh, leader women where we can connect you with uh, other companies and also where we can provide training so women can be better represented in public speaking and also you will be able to disseminate your work as you as you deserve. So yeah, a lot of things uh, excited coming forward. So uh, yeah, I guess, you, yeah, I encourage you to follow us in our social networks and to join our community in the future to stay tuned. And uh, now I will give the floor back to Kate so we can continue with the webinar. So I hope you enjoy it.